Hi, in this Quick Bits episode, we'll be seeing why MQTT was invented, what it is, how it works, and why it's so popular with Facebook, Amazon, and makers alike. MQTT was created in 1999 by Andy Stanford Clark and Arlen Nipper out of a need to send sensor data from oil pipes in the desert over satellite links. Andy had to solve the problem of communicating with low power, low CPU, low memory sensors instantaneously over unreliable, low bandwidth wireless and satellite networks. This came at a time when other protocols such as AMQP, STOMP, CAP, XMPP, RESTful HTTP and WAMP had been around for a while. So what is MQTT? MQTT stands for Message Queue Telemetry Transport and is a publish subscribe communication framework which allows embedded devices and applications to communicate freely with each other across low bandwidth networks using a broker. Anything that connects to the broker is considered a client and can be a publisher who sends messages to the broker, subscriber who receives messages from the broker, or both publisher and subscriber. Subscribers never need to poll publishers because publishers will only send a message to the broker on an event. All clients initiate and maintain a constant network connection with the broker. So if a publisher vanishes from the network, the broker will notify subscribers. This also enables very responsive communications as there is no TCP IP setup and teardown for every message sent. A client can subscribe to one or more publishers using topics. Topics are defined as a hierarchical, case-sensitive string using slashes as a delimiter and can be specific, for example, in my house, in the bathroom, there is a humidity sensor, or using wildcards, such as a plus sign, which is a single level reference and could refer to all the water levels on a farm, or a hash at the end as a multi-level reference to all sensors on a particular vehicle. Publishers and subscribers can specify one of three quality of service levels, which helps the broker decide the re-delivery attempts of each message. Each cost level has its advantage and disadvantage, Zero the lowest cost level where the message will be delivered once to the subscriber with no acknowledge expected. The broker will not store or attempt any redelivery. In cost level one, the message will be delivered at least once with an ACK from the subscriber. It is possible for the subscriber to see duplicate messages. The highest cost level guarantees the message will be delivered only once. This is also the slowest method as it relies on a strong handshake between broker and client. If the subscriber cost level is higher than a publisher cost level, the broker will automatically downgrade the subscriber cost level. So the broker is responsible for several things. Authentication and authorization of clients, receiving and storing messages sent from publishers, forwarding messages to subscribers, and guaranteeing a quality of service for messages. Brokers can also become a client when acting as a proxy to other brokers. However, this is a more advanced setup, and I'll publish a video later on this. So what are the advantages of MQTT? First of all, there's no steep learning curve. The protocol is dead simple, Woo! and MQTT clients can be set up with very little effort with all the popular languages supported. Secondly, MQTT code runs well in a small footprint, requiring minimal CPU and clients can drop into ultra low power mode to conserve battery further. Thirdly, the lightweight protocol reduces payload size, increases battery life, and the number of sensors can scale up to thousands or millions with minimal infrastructure. MQTT will also deliver messages without caring about the payload content and will decouple all clients from each other, avoiding any expensive application logic. Fourthly, devices on the MQTT network have reliable, instantaneous, bi-directional, event-driven communication over high latency low bandwidth, unreliable networks, so no expensive polling of clients. However, there are downsides to MQTT. First of all, you need a working TCP IP stack. This can cause issues with clients that don't have Ethernet or wireless. However, there is another protocol called MQTT-SN or MQTT-S, which works over UDP and serial. Secondly, network connections from client to broker remain open indefinitely, which places an extra burden on the broker. However, many low-end brokers can be set up as a cluster, enabling millions of clients to connect. Thirdly, MQTT lacks any encryption capabilities and is the responsibility of the application. Encryption does add extra overhead and it was a good thing to leave it out of the protocol. 
I hope this has given you a quick overview of what MQTT is and what it does. Check out my other videos in this series where I go further into the MQTT protocol, show you some of the public MQTT brokers you can use and implement a quick and dirty MQTT application. Thanks for watching and see you next time.